Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the vlog. I'm Mr. Gaza. Today, I'll be changing the oil in my 2020 Nissan Armada. All right, in order to change the oil on this vehicle, it's not as simple as you think. You need to remove splash guards and also you need to have extensions and sockets and make sure you have the right oil filter. All right guys, listen, enough talking. I'm gonna go ahead and get the vehicles into the shop and um, I hope you like today's video. Yes, welcome back. Well guys, here we have my 2020 Nissan Armada. In all the countries, this is a Y62, the Nissan Patrol. Um, look at this beautiful engine bay. Yeah, I just detailed the engine bay um, recently and this beautiful V8 is a 5.6 liter motor. It produces 400 horsepower with 419 foot-pounds of torque when you use 93 octane. It's uh, made with a seven-speed automatic transmission and it is a all-wheel drive drivetrain. This is one of the more refined motors that it came with. It's a variable valve, variable valve timing engine. So this is where you're gonna need the high, perform high performance oil to help you with this motor. Um, the tolerances for these motors are very, very close. So this is why you're gonna need the Zero W20 motor oil, okay? Very, very important that you use the specified weight of the oil or else everything will not perform as well as it should this color that I have here is beautiful I wish I had a pickup truck with the same trim I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm safe I'm gonna I'm gonna go find one with the same year same trim and see if I can match yeah I don't know I'm worried like that but yes we're gonna go on and eat the vehicle okay and um, take a look and see what's on here. Here we have the splash guard, and it's a metal splash guard. Okay, there's four bolts. Yeah, it's very tough. It's a, a metal splash guard, but right there in the back, that's the oil pan. I wish the oil pan was covered because the oil pan is exposed. That's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if, where these bolts are to unbolt the splash guard. Here we have our basic tools that you need to successfully remove the splash guard. Uh, it's just a basic Craftsman wrench box. I've had this over 25 years, still have it, all my pieces. But also I'm gonna use um, one of my power tools. The um, Currently I'm doing a voiceover video because the fan in the shop is so loud. As you can see right here, the previous owners did not put back the bolt that's holding the splash guard up front. So there's one bolt missing. And let's see. Oh, no, there's two bolts missing. So there's only two bolts holding the metal splash guard. And this is why I've been hearing these rattling noises under the vehicle. So there's one right there. That's a 13 millimeter bolt. And here's the other one. And um, the oil pan uses a 14 millimeter. I know that for a fact, just by looking at it, that's a 14 millimeter.
Here we have the oil filter exposed and uh, also the oil cooler. That's a huge oil cooler, very huge. Um, under there, it's like a catch can whenever you pull in the filter off so it doesn't really drain all over the subframe on the vehicle. Um, taking a look under here for any structural damages, everything looks good. Wow, look at that uh, sway bar, it's very, very thick. That is the thickest sway bar I've seen, wow. All right, peeps, when, yeah, welcome back. Whenever you drain into oil, make sure you pull the cap off. It may be hard to take off. I don't know why it's like that. And also just pull the depth stick and just leave it like that. You just, you want the most ear to get in there whenever you're taking out that oil. It's just very important. All right, now we're draining the oil. This is a Pennzoil oil filter, not recommended. I do not recommend using these oil filters. We only use Mobile One extended performance oil filters only. As you can see the oil is draining all over the sway bar, but it's not touching the frame, the K-frame of the body. It's actually draining to that catch can, that catch pan. Let me carefully turn it. Oh, freak, that is hot. Yeah, the oil is hot. I had it oil idling outside for like 20 minutes, just basically to free up the oil, make it run out quicker. That is hot. Um, be careful, do not burn yourself. All right. You can see that oil is really bad. It's, it's done. That oil is cooked and it doesn't even look like that is synthetic oil. All right. All right. Now I'm just going to wipe off the oil that's on the surrounding areas of the oil cooler and then also I'm going to wipe off the base of the oil cooler where the, the filter screws on to. I don't want to have any dirt on there. That can cause rips and uh, bad seal. So you may have oil leaks. Basically make sure it's nice and clean. I'm switching up the surface of the rack so I can get a cleaner surface to wipe it off. Make sure you do that, please. Very important. Very important. All right. There's missing a spot right up there. Let me just get it. Make sure you do a nice clean job, guys. This is your vehicle. You um, take pride into what you have. It will last a long time. I guarantee you, it will last a very long time. We're back. Okay, now we have our new O filter. This is the M1-110A. It's the mobile extended performance oil filter this filter is rated the best oil filter right now on the market believe it or not mobile one did not pay me to say this uh, one of our fellow youtubers did a uh, independent uh, study on these oil filters and mobile one extended performance oil filters turned out to be number one. It has more filter paper and it's uh, evenly spaced out. So it gives you maximum filtration, All right? I have it in this thing here so that in, in case I fill it, it doesn't spill on my floor. The reason why I'm gonna fill it halfway is because you never want to leave an oil filter dry and do a cold start on the engine. If you have the ability, I know some Toyotas, the filters upside down and some Mazdas,
but if you have the ability to screw the filter upwards, I would recommend that you go ahead and fill it halfway if it's slanted on the base. If it's straight up mount, you can fill it all the way up to the top. But because ours is slanted, I am going to have to fill it halfway. Okay. I'm going to make sure I do this properly because I don't want anybody telling me, oh, you told me to do this, you told me to do that. No, I'm not going to hear that from you guys. You guys are really good guys. You're not going to do that to me, are you? So I'm going to fill this up halfway. Make sure you have a funnel and we're going to fill it up a little bit, okay? It's going to soak it up. It is going to soak it. If it gets out on the top, don't worry about it. Right, need a little bit more. It shows here. That it's kind of halfway full. I don't know if you see that. Let me put a little bit more. Let it soak in. Let me put a little bit on the seal. Yeah, that's half the full. So what I use, the clean oil. Don't use the dirty oil to put on the ring. You need, you need to use clean oil. We're back and um, make sure you get a funnel to do the filling because under this plastic cover creates such a huge space between the fill space and um, so the funnel will work very good remember these nissans take seven quarts of oil so you want to make sure you have a five quart jug and two quarts going down in it. All right, I took the liberty of marking the quart side on my jug. To, to let me know exactly where to stop because it takes exactly seven quarts. Remember, if you overfill it over the fill line, you can cause bearing damage because now you will have oil slapping onto the crank shaft and you can do a lot of damage like that, okay? You don't want to overfill it. All right, so right here, this is the first quart and that's the second. And also, let me go ahead and clean this off. So I can check, make sure I have the right amount. Here we go. Seven quarts. That was one quart and some. Almost two quarts. Make sure it's on a level. Okay, it's almost two. Two quarts. Now you're gonna take your dipstick, put it in a hole. That's what she said. And um, just to let you know, um, it will read high until you start it up. Then the oil will be circulating through the system 
and then you have it okay basically run it for like 20 seconds then you're going to fill up the oil filter and then you're going to have oil all over the place and wait five minutes five minutes you come back and you check the oil level let me see if it's reading on the dipstick oh yeah they read yes we're reading seven quarts here you go the new filter in its position it's sitting on the oil cooler and it's hand tight only make sure you clean the surrounding area because you want to have a sealed filter you don't want it leaking with dirt particles in between the seal you can bust it like that too After running it, it will circulate the oil through the whole system and it will give you a more accurate reading on the oil level. I did put in seven quarts and this includes the oil that I had put into the filter as well. Seven quarts. No more, no less. All right, that's, that's over 20 seconds. I'm going ahead, turn it off. All right, go. And I'm going to check the level. Make sure you clean off the dipstick because it's going to have oil. Wait. We're going to wait for at least two minutes. Let it run down. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And, um, Make sure. Now we're here to check the oil level. Okay. Seven quarts. Perfect. There is seven quarts in here. When I just checked the dipstick, it was a little bit under, but when it sits longer, it will actually read the full mark on the dipstick. All right, so seven quarts only. So far, so good. Hey guys, thank you for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. I want you to go ahead, guys, you know, anybody with the Y64 Nissan Patrol or the Nissan Armada, the 2020, or between 2017 and up, this is the process you need to go about by changing the oil and the filter. Share my video and uh, comment and please subscribe. And as always, guys, peace, love and happiness.